What is up guys, it's Omi here and welcome to the Liverpool West Bromwich Albion post-match analysis and reaction show and I will also talk about the Merseyside Derby in this video Hugely, hugely disappointing two results for Liverpool. Four points dropped because of two referee mistakes and also because the Liverpool players have been just very, very wasteful in front of goal. Let me know what did you think about the games in the comments below. I would love to know. And, and also vote on the YouTube card on either top corner. Where will Liverpool finish at the end of this season? I would love to know. I still think that we will finish either third or fourth. But this was a huge missed opportunity. Again, and Firmino had a glorious chance in the 17th minute. I was already screaming goal because uh, it, the ball looked like it was destined to end up in the back of the net. Salah picked out Firmino in the box and Firmino shoots wide. That was the biggest chance of the first half for Liverpool. But also West Brom defended, of course, very, very compact. Alan Pardew, their new manager, desperately wanted to just uh, shut up shop, park the bus and you know try to frustrate Liverpool and it it worked for them also Firmino maybe could have crossed to Coutinho this time it was Liverpool's strongest lineup unlike uh, you know the the game against Everton which which saw a very strange lineup with with Solanke, Oxley, Chamberlain, Milner starting um, which was really weird by Jurgen Klopp because I thought that we will go with our strongest lineup against Everton but again, that game, we should have won that game as well. If Mane squares it to Firmino in the first half, it could have been 2 near and game over. And, and this time also Salah inches away from an Alexander-Arnold cross, which could have been again 1 near. Second half, Firmino, Salah missed glorious opportunities to put Liverpool ahead, but also credit to West Brom, they hit the bar in the first half and actually in the second half there was a spell of like three minutes where West Brom could have scored three times, Karius made two good saves and the third one, Hegazi, you know, heads, heads it over the bar, so it was a very very nervous five minutes in the, in the beginning of the second half, but after that Liverpool actually just dominated West Brom, we pick, packed them back and really should have should have scored more goals uh, than the one that we got, which actually I'm so, so mad at, at uh, Dominic Solanke's goal being disallowed because there was a whipped in cross, 82nd minute or something like that by Alexander Arnold. He whips in a cross and it hits the defender, then it hits Solanke in the stomach and then it hits his hand slightly and goes in. How is that intentional handball? The rule says that if it's intentional handball, that's where you should uh, rule out, uh, um, that's where you, the referee should give handball, but it, that, it, that never could have been handball. And you could argue that if, if it doesn't hit his hand, the ball wouldn't have gone in. I'm not 100% sure about that, but still, you know, why do you punish uh, the, the attacking team? Why do you punish the the striker who could have had one of his most important goals in his career to win a Premier League game, Dominic Sainke is only 20 years old. That was probably his biggest moment in the Premier League to score a goal in front of the cup, to make it 1-0 and to potentially win the game for, West Brom, for Liverpool against West Brom and the referee rules it out and again at, at the first glance, the referee was pointing to the center circle, saying that the goal should stand and it's 1-0 to Liverpool. And I was celebrating like crazy, but then the ball was ruled out. By the way, sorry that this video is a little bit late. I was away uh, yesterday evening, so I couldn't watch the game live, but I recorded it, I watched it, and now I'm giving my thoughts, my, my post-match uh, reaction, and again, the referee makes a huge huge mistake in my opinion it should have been a goal it wasn't intentional handball and it should have been one in liverpool and that's it west brom were never threatening money had a glorious chance in the 56th minute which he missed it could have been a brilliant goal liverpool created enough chances and Jurgen Klopp said that we created seven eight chances after the game he said that it four of them were clear-cut chances normally these players put them away, but I just don't understand what happened since, uh, you know, we scored 15 goals in three games. 
since then we scored one goal in two games like how can you be so inconsistent but that's just textbook typical Liverpool uh, by the way I treated myself with the new Liverpool shirt and I got uh, this uh, name and number on the back because I wasn't sure which Liverpool player to get because you know Coutinho could leave uh, in January or at the summer um, and I absolutely love Salah and Mane, but I thought I would give uh, I would give myself a, uh, an early Christmas present and uh, and just treat myself. So, and I, I could play football in this because I it has the my name and my favorite number at the, at the back. So yeah, I'm really really over the moon with the, with this T-shirt. I got some really really nice Liverpool merchandise. As you can see, so I might do um, I might do a video where I actually show all my kits and all my T-shirts and everything. So yeah, I might do a video showing you all my favorite, uh, you know, memorabilia, the T-shirts and everything. So yeah, I just I got these uh, very very uh, just just now, just a couple of days ago. Here is the 2010 Spain winning T-shirt. Here is in a retro England T-shirt. So yeah, I'm over the moon with this. Such an incredibly frustrating game. And also, let's talk about the Merseyside derby. So baffling team selection by by Jurgen Klopp. But I sh we shouldn't blame Jurgen Klopp to be honest, because we dominated Everton. We we absolutely steamrolled them. We sh we could have we we scored a brilliant goal. Mohamed Salah again, a wonderful, absolutely beautiful goal skinning two Everton players and then finding the top corner past Ashley Williams. The goalkeeper had no chance. It was one of the best goals of the season. Mohamed Salah now has 19 goals. I think Salah scored the same amount of goals uh, against Roma in the entirety of last season than what he scored this season already. And it's the middle of December. Absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, Mane, when he goes through, he has uh, Salah and Firmino next to him. But instead of, uh, you know, crossing, and it would have been potentially an open goal, instead of crossing, he actually, oh my goodness, he actually shoots wide. And that was the moment which Liverpool regretted at the end of the game. In the second half, again, we had chances. The Everton keeper made some good saves. But then, one moment of madness by Dejan Lovren and also the referee, and Everton are level because uh, Calvert Lewin goes through. He goes away from goal, which is crucial. So he goes away from goal, no danger, no threat. And Lovren, for some reason, gets touch tight with him and puts his hands on the back of Calvert Lewin, who bumps Lovren, anticipating contact, and then he falls over. If Lovren doesn't touch Calvert Lewin, just ushers him out of the way because he was heading for the corner flag. He wasn't heading towards goal, so Lovren had no need to to touch him basically. But he gave Calvert Lewin the opportunity to fall over, and I still, even if Lovren touched him on the back, I still don't think it's a penalty because there is not enough contact for Calvert Lewin to go over so dramatically. He falls like a pack of cards, and. Uh, the referee gives a penalty. Absolutely baffling. Everton deserved absolutely nothing from the game. And it's so frustrating that Everton and West Brom, two of the poorest Premier League teams this season, came to Anfield and got two draws each. And they don't deserve that. But, you know, in football, you earn your own luck. We should have put our chances away. We should have scored a lot more goals against Everton and a lot more goals against West Brom. And then we wouldn't be able to complain. And what, what makes this even more frustrating is that Chelsea lost to West Ham, Manchester United lost to Man City. So there was a chance to close the gap on them, but instead the gap became bigger. Manchester United won in a scrappy game against Bournemouth. Bournemouth actually had more shots, more shots on target than Man United at Old Trafford, but Man United still scraped the through uh, with a 1 0 win. So now Man United are, I think, um, 8 points ahead of Liverpool, or, or, or uh, wait, no, yeah, something, 7 points ahead of Liverpool, something like that. Chelsea are now 5 points ahead of Liverpool, or something like that, which is really, really frustrating. And now Liverpool are logged in a battle for fourth place with four teams. Surprisingly, you know, Burnley are uh, level on points with Liverpool and Tottenham as well. And Arsenal are one point behind. Luckily, Arsenal couldn't beat West Ham 
so that's a good good news for us but still that's just so so frustrating now we have two tough away games the second one is against Arsenal in the Premier League and that is going to be a really really hard ask for Liverpool to collect three, six, six points from but that's what we have to do if we want to keep pace with the top four we have to pick up victories very very soon also the January transfer window it's vital that we sign Van Dijk to put just just to put Lovren out of the team because he's a mistake waiting to happen even though he has been pretty okay pretty solid since his horrendous mistakes against Tottenham but again against Everton he makes a big big mistake touching Carver lewin if he's smarter there and more calm that situation could have been avoided entirely so I really hope that we've signed Van Dijk or somebody of that caliber as a centre-back let me know what did you think of the game in the comments below and thanks for watching more videos coming soon see you later guys goodbye